Sometimes we want to focus on a subset of a data set that satisfies some sort of conditions. Let's say in this case, we want to use this function right here that we call filter um, to filter out a specific part of our data set and create a new subset for further analysis. For example, we can create a subset of our final demo data frame um, that only contain patients that are 54 years old. Um, now if we run this code, we should see that there is only one observation that meets this criterion. Now what if we want to filter our data frame in accordance to two criteria? Well, in that case, we want to use or, or and, um, the, this sign right here, or the amber sign, or sorry, the ampersand. And we've learned this already in the logical operator section in tutorial one. But here is what we have to do if we have multiple criteria. So in this case, we're only retaining, um, or we're creating a subset that only contains information of patients that are either 54 or 56 years old. And here's another way for you to write the exact same code. If you're confused about filter, um, there is this whole functions debunked section that breaks it down even further. And here is also a small section that discusses how we can nest um, the function is.na into our filter function. And here are also the try it yourself sections and the quiz questions. So make sure that you pause this video right now and complete these questions before moving on. Now let's say we want to reorder our observations depending on a specific variable. If we want to do that, then we need to use this function right here called arrange. And this function is very easy to use. All we have to do is to specify the specific data set or data frame that we're working with, and then the variable or variables that we want our, um, or that we want R to arrange our whole table by. So for example, if we want to arrange our table by age, then we would need to write arrange final underscore demo comma age. And note how our table is now arranged depending on the variable age. So by default, the arrangement would be by ascending order. So lowest to highest. If we want to arrange the variable or the observations um, in an or in a descending order, then we would need to nest this function right here. Now that's how we can arrange our table depending on one variable. What if we want our table to be arranged by multiple variables? Well, in that case, all we need to do is add the second variable as another argument like this. And note that the order of the variables matter. So we write this code right here, then R would arrange our final underscore demo, demo um, data set by age first, and then ID. And as always, here is the functions debunked section, as well as the try it yourself in the quiz questions. So now we're going to move on to adding new variables. To add new variables into our table, we would need to use this function right here called mutate. But first, let's think about what we would, or when and why we would need to add a new variable. There are multiple reasons um, why we would want to add new variables or a new column to our data frame. Maybe it's to calculate a percentage of something. Um, maybe we want to combine two columns together into one single column. Or maybe we want to add a unique key to each of our observations. There are many reasons why you would need to or you would want to add a new variable to your data frame. For this tutorial, let's say we want to find when each of the patients in our data frame was born. So we already know that this data set was taken in the year 2013. So to find when our patients were born, we would need to subtract 2013 by the patient's age. So that's 2013 minus age. And then let's also give that new variable a name. In this case, let's just call it um, born underscore year. So 
our complete function should look like this. And now if we run this code, we should see a new column that appears with all the birth years of our patients. Okay, so now let's say we don't wanna add a new variable to our existing data frame. We only want to keep the new variable that we created. Um, so in other words, we're basically creating a new variable, or sorry, a new table that contains only one single variable that we specify. So instead of using mutate in that case, we will need to use transmute. So using the same arguments with just a different function, here's the output. Um, so as we can see here, there is only the born year um, variable as the output, whereas when we use mutate, um, born year was added to our original data frame. And again, here are the functions debunk section that will go into a bit more detail um, as to what mutate and transmute mean. Um, and these are also hyperlinked, so if you want more details, you can click onto them um, and check them out. And here are also the try yourself questions and the quiz questions. Now we are going to go over how to conduct summary statistics and use the function group by, which are again all parts of the Diploer package. We use summarize um, to quickly define, or sorry, to quickly find a statistic of a particular variable. So for example, if we want to find the average age of the whole data frame, then we would need to use this code right here. And note how we also use the argument na.rm to remove missing variables from our summary statistics. Um, and here's where we can see the average age of our whole data frame. So group by, on the other hand, will sort um, or will divide our data frame into groups by a variable that we specify. So for example, if we want um, to group our data frame by gender, then we will need to use group by and then specify the data frame name and then the variable gender. And then now if we use this new data frame that we created and then nest that into summarize, so write this code, um, and then instead of using the um, final underscore demo, we use the new data frame that we just created here, then R should be able to tell us the average age of our participants based on their gender. Um, and as always, here are the functions debunk sections and the try it yourself questions. Here's also a short section that teaches you how to use group by um, together with filter and mutate. They're really fun to use. They're also very helpful and applicable as well, um, especially when we're doing data analysis in R, and you can explore them on your own. You may have noticed that when we're doing multiple step operations, we need to assign the output to a new variable every time. Um, it's manageable if it's just a few steps, but it becomes more annoying when there are more steps to do. Um, if we use the pipe operator in this case, then it will save us from creating many unnecessary variables. So it's a very convenient way for us to connect all of our codes because pipe takes the output from one function and then use that as an input to the following function. In other words, it pipes our codes from one um, function to the other, so we don't have to write multiple lines of indirectly connected codes. So for this tutorial, let's say we want to keep only observations of patients with age um, greater than 40, and then only using these observations, we want to create a new variable called born year calculated by 2013 minus age. Normally, we will need to write these quotes um, or these codes where we filter out the data first um, or the information first, and then we use mutate to add a new variable. But if we use pipe, we can just do this. So we would specify the data set that we want all of our following functions to use first. And then all we have to do next is write our filter and mutate functions like so without having to specify the original data set. 
every single time. And also another perk is that it stays in one coat chunk and it runs all together. So when you're working with a very large data set, for example, or when you're working with a very large R file with lots of codes, Pipe is a very good way for you to organize your data analysis codes or really your codes in general. To emphasize how important missing values are, or how important it is for us to know how to deal with the missing values, here's a summary of how each function deals with the missing values. If you have any questions about this, then it is suggested that you go through the functions debunk sections again, or click on the links directly um, of each of the functions debunk sections to learn more about these functions. And congratulations for reaching the end of this tutorial. By now, you should be somewhat familiar with the Dibbler package in the Tidyverse core. There are a few functions that we went through today, including rename, select, filter, arrange, mutate, transmute, and summarize. And you were also introduced to the concept of pipe. This was a very long tutorial, but there are lots of try it yourself questions and quiz questions um, that you can utilize to enhance and to check your knowledge and understanding. Again, a friendly reminder that the easiest way for you to be fluent in R is to practice, practice, practice. Good luck.